We will set ourselves some high standards and they'll be benchmarked against things like the UEFA Champions League standards for availability in both training and in matches. Dave, welcome to Robins TV. Thank you. First time we've had the chance to chat to you. Um, what's it like being back in pre-season and what are your hopes for the next few weeks? Yeah, Pre-season's um, it's always a difficult time because you don't quite know what the expectations are from the players or from the other staff and obviously a new club so um, excited by the challenge of that. It's always quite daunting though because there's no points to play for at the moment so it's always a really thin line between performance and injury so um, we need to walk that really carefully um, and I'm sure having looked at some of the boys this morning um, we're in really good shape so I'm really really pleased to be back in. You and the staff have been in for a few weeks players are back in this morning. How are they looking? Are they good spirits? Physically looking good? Yeah, really good spirits. We set um, a number of um, expectations at the end of last season. So after we played Brentford at the end of the season, we had a, a good conversation with the staff and with the players. Um, changed a few things over the summer and just made some minor alterations to that in terms of the, some of the intensity of the closed season programming. Um, and the staff have been brilliant in terms of adapting to those changes. Um, and more importantly, the players really have accepted that and have really taken the sort of gauntlet, if you like, and um, they've run with it really, really well so far. We saw the players do a, an SDS test this morning. Can you explain what that is? <laughs> yeah, it's not a nice test if you fancy it, Dave. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a test of aerobic ability, basically. But like we said to the players, really, it's a test, but it's also um, it's an opportunity. It's really an opportunity for them to set a standard and they're the clear things that we've sort of laid down to them. It's about them testing themselves rather than us testing them. Um, and for us to establish a standard that we're happy with at the football club and that really is always going to be founded in their athletic potential as individuals. Um, and the results from that this morning were really, really promising. Over the years, some people will call it a bleak test, then it became the yo-yo test. Yeah. How does this differ? What does it give you that perhaps other tests don't give? Yeah, I was first introduced to it by a guy called Paul, um, Paul Balsam, who was the head of sports science for the Swedish FA. Nigel brought him to um, Leicester City, one of my old clubs, um, and he devised that test as part of his actual PhD program. Um, what it basically does is it gives you a really nice test of aerobic ability up to a sub-maximum heart rate level, but then we tag on an additional three runs, which basically cause the heart rates to drift a little bit to the point at which we can then get to a maximum effort run and that's the real key bit because it shows us not only their physical capacity as a player but also their psychological attributes and how much staying power they've got when things are not feeling particularly nice inside and we saw as I said we saw some really good things this morning. It was very tiring to watch it I have to say. <laughs> yeah, you looked tired. <laughs> you went to the Bears high performance centre and, yep. and used their indoor facilities. Um, was that for a particular reason? Absolutely, yeah. These type of tests, we, we have to try and control as many variables as we can. Um, one of the things, obviously, as we've seen here this morning in Bristol, um, sometimes it can be climatically challenging, So um, as it was. So it was an indoor test, which means that at any point over the course of the season, particularly in around the international breaks, we'll be looking to retest the individuals just to see whereabouts they post in relation to where they were on day one of pre-season. So it's a good marker for us, but it's also a good follow-up test, um, which we can introduce at a number of different levels, whether it's with a player coming back from injury or if a player's performance is dropped off at all, it allows us a real good benchmark to come back to. But we have to, as I said, control those other variables so that we can get like for like when we're looking at the data. A couple of other tests you did this morning. Uh, HRV and a CMJ, everyone loves it. an acronym. Yeah, what, like, what do they stand for? Yeah, it's like MFI, isn't it? Yeah, no. <laughs> HRV is like a heart rate variability test. It allows us to look at beat to beat variations within the heart rate rather than just looking at a resting heart rate. Um, there's a number of um, different research articles that looks at this in terms of an individual's level of stress that their body is undergoing, and we see drifts in, in the, the beat to beat sort of variation. So it's a nice baseline test that we can repeat. It's a five minute lying down test so none of the players complain too much. Um, and over that sort of five minute period, we can get a real idea as to how stressed that individual is at any given point. So we can always come back to that if there's a change in a player's performance or in and around injury related status. In the CMJ? 
CMJ is like just a counter movement jump. It's done on a force plate, so it's a, it's a test of, of power, essentially. And we can look at eccentric power, which is working against gravity as you go down into the squat, and then they're real concentric, explosive power. And they're really, really important things now. When you look at um, all of the best players in their game, they're always quick, they're always powerful runners. And that's what we need to try and develop within our group, this ability to have a good aerobic base, but also to have that explosive ability. And they're the key sort of um, markers which differentiate players within the leagues. Last year was a, a difficult one all round, um, not least for you know, trying to get players fit and on the pitch. Um, yeah. Is part of the, or, or perhaps the biggest challenge now for you and the you know, performance staff really to get those players physically resilient to cope with the challenges of the championship? Yeah, and that, that's the, none of the players, and, and to be honest, none of the staff enjoy pre-season. As I said, there's no points to play for really in, in the pre-season sort of period. But in terms of developing robustness of players, you know, nine out of ten players that complete your pre-season program over a six-week period with gradual reintroductions and increasing that load, it leaves them in a really good position to be in robust enough to cope with the demands of the game. And as you've mentioned there, in terms of availability for both training and for games, if we can't get the players available for training, then the coaches and the managers can't get them to the level and drill them to the point where they know where they are on a, on a given day. Um, and that's really important for us as a department. So we'll set ourselves some high standards and they'll be benchmarked against things like the UEFA Champions League standards for availability in both training and in matches. Um, and we'll make ourselves um, accountable for that. But I think what we're trying to really try and do here is to try and develop a shared accountability between everybody that's involved so it's not the medical team's problem if um, a player gets injured, it's not just the coaches, there's also the players involved and, and lots of other things from ground staff all of the way through the sort of pyramid. Um, and we need to make everyone aware of what our roles are within that situation, but also how we can all become and develop this shared accountability, which for us should leave us in better state than where we were last year. What happens over the next few days? What can the players look forward to? What, what can we... They can look forward to going home early evening. Um, this I afternoon, for example. I I'd, yeah, this afternoon. So they've got a, an extended warm-up and then they'll go into a, quite a short spider-type run, which is like an agility-based run, but at lower levels than what they would be able to achieve. So it's, it's, it's more of a tick in a box process, just getting them used to being away from in a linear pattern, so away from a straight line sort of run, just to try and get their groins and their hamstrings a little bit more attuned to some of the movements they'll do. Um, after that, they'll go into their first set of ball work, which for the players is always nice and exciting, but generally what you do see is they need to dust the cobwebs off from their feet as well. Um, and you'll, you'll see them struggle even with basic passing related activities this afternoon but that will gradually improve and, and those drills will be sharpened up over the course of the next sort of seven to ten days.